Hi, I'm Laura Janchik, and I am welcoming today Greg Du Bois, a member of the Will County Audubon Society, an expert on birds. And he is going to answer some of my questions today about um, birds in the winter and birds in Illinois. So Greg, can you start by telling us how you got interested in birds and how you're involved in things now with birds? Sure, sure. Um, it, for most of my life, I've had an interest in nature, I guess, and even through my adult life, it was, it's always been sort of a, something that interested me, uh, nature, animals, birds, etc. And as my wife and I approached our retirement age, we found that we um, started to devote more time to bird watching because birds are everywhere and there's a great diversity of birds, even here in, even here in the Joliet area. It's, when you start looking, it's amazing the diversity of birds that you can find, uh, all different colors, sizes, and shapes, etc. So uh, uh, as, uh, as we got retired and started looking for things to, to do that we wanted to do, since we were not working, we, we actually started traveling um, for uh, bird excursions. We joined Will County Audubon. Uh, we got active with that organization. And um, uh, we started traveling uh, domestically. And we've been to a number of states uh, since retiring in 2011. Uh, we've gone to Michigan, to Arizona, Texas, Florida, uh, Ohio, uh, all different places to see all different kinds of birds that, that we don't have here in Illinois. So um, our travels and our interest in birds kind of led us in a couple of different directions as well. One uh, was uh, uh, because Medewa National Tallgrass Prairie right here uh, just south of um, Joliet uh, has a huge, uh, wonderful grassland and uh, population of grassland kinds of birds that you don't see in the suburbs or in the city or even in our, even in our parks around the city. So um, being, being drawn to Medewan kind of got me involved in wanting to volunteer at Medewan. So um, uh, that has evolved into uh, becoming a, um, a, a tour guide for birding in the summer months, being assigned to monitor uh, bird life during breeding season so that the ecologists at uh, Medewan can, um, can uh, study and, and, and gain that data for um, for research purposes and for kind of a um, kind of a, uh, a status update on how they're doing with the restoration of the prairie habitat there. Um, so another another interest that sort of started uh, several years ago after my wife and I were in um, uh, really into our travel and our uh, more interest in birding uh, was bird photography because. You, and when you see these really cool birds, you want, to, you want to remember and record the cool birds that you've seen, and then you want to share the, um, those experiences with other people. So, so uh, it sort of started out as, uh, yeah, we'll just go look at some birds, and then it's kind, of, it's kind of blossomed from there. So we're having a great time with it. I have a daughter who is really into bird watching, but she doesn't really know anything about it. She's got notebooks from the library, of course. She has a pair of binoculars. How does someone get started bird watching? Well, that's a good question. Um, Will County Audubon chapter is, is a great uh, starting point. Uh, you can come to monthly meetings with, uh, with the group when, when we're not locked down in pandemic. Yeah. Um, we, and under normal circumstances, we have um, during our uh, meeting and program season, we have uh, week, uh, excuse me, monthly birding excursions that we take. So, and, and you don't have to be a bird nerd to go on those uh, excursions. We love having new people because we love sharing what we know about birds with uh, new people, and then after a few trips out with with us, then uh, then you become a bird nerd too. After a while, <clears throat> um, so that that's a great way to get started. And and uh, we have really cool programs um, during our program and meeting season. This past um, oh, let's see, oh well, uh, just a week ago, we had a um, 
a tour guide company owner give us a program on his favorite birds and wildlife of Costa Rica. And uh, that was an hour long fascinating look at birds and wildlife that he experiences as he tour guides in Costa Rica. And of course, he, he travels all over the world guiding for birding tours and uh, it is just a wealth of knowledge. So those types of things can get you involved as well as uh, if you just come uh, register at uh, the Medewan Visitor Center for uh, birding tours in June, um, you can come out and of course, we don't know if we're gonna be doing birding tours this June. We didn't do it uh, in June of 2020, but hopefully 2021 we'll be back on the road. But uh, Medewan is a wonderful place to, um, to look for birds and you have tour guides with you that will know where to find the birds tell you what the birds are, and then you can start networking with the bird nerds that come to those, to, to those yeah. uh, 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 excursions as well. So there's a, couple of, there's a couple of good ways to get involved. Well, and I uh, don't like to go outside, right? It's getting cold, but right. there's a lot of birds that stay around in the winter in Illinois. Which birds could we expect to see now, you know, starting in December, what kinds of birds will there be around if people are looking? Oh, sure, sure. Well, all you have to do is put up a bird feeder, and uh, if you put it up, they will come. <laughs> uh, and of course, a good number of the birds that we'll get are uh, the house sparrows, because those are, that's a ubiqu ubiquitous species in the area. But uh, you will attract beautiful cardinals, male and female cardinals. If you're near mature trees, like near a park or in my neighborhood that's, that's um, oh, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 years old, we've got big mature trees. So we've, we get downy woodpeckers. We get here, we get red-bellied woodpeckers. We get black-capped chickadees. And um, this year is an interesting year because, uh, because it's called an eruption year. And birds that we don't normally get, except for during eruption years, are coming down out of the northern uh, Canadian provinces and the northern uh, uh, United States. And there's various theories on why they, why they uh, come further south in their ranges in various winters. But uh, it, it, the most likely and uh, it, reason is because their food sources, for some reason, didn't pan out for them in this particular year. So there's a lot of reports of birds that we don't normally see in, in the Joliet area, and those uh, include evening grosbeaks, uh, red-breasted nuthatches, white-winged crossbills, red crossbills. So we don't normally see those, but in eruption years, we'll look out and say, wow, look at that, you know? So it, it's, it just adds to the diversity. So there's there's some species and some things that yeah. uh, that we'll see. It sounds like it's it's a good year for us to be focusing on bird watching. <laughs> this is this is a big eruption year um, uh, right now. Yeah. So get your feeders out and and see what you can pull in. Is there anything else that we can do to help the birds in the winter? Because I don't know anything. So I'm always like, their little legs have to be so cold, right? <laughs> Um, right. I don't know how they survive. What can we do to help them? Well, um, a lot of people, or at least some people, will put out a, uh, a heated bird bath. And you don't really think about birds drinking water, but it's amazing. My wife and I have, and it's not, it's not a really elaborate thing. It's just, a, it's just a, about an 18-inch shallow dish that, that is made to be a bird bath, and it has a thermostatically controlled heater in it. So it gets plugged in when, when we start getting cold weather. And just a day or two ago, it was, I don't know, it was 35 to between 35 and 40 degrees. And it wasn't, the water wasn't freezing or anything, but the birds were bathing in that uh, water at 35 to 40 degrees. And I mean, the water was just spraying everywhere. So they were really having a great time. And, you know, and they were drinking the water, you know, they, they drink and bathe and do all kinds of crazy stuff in that water. But but uh, water is an important uh, element for birds. Um, some species of birds, like black-capped chickadees, for instance, will actually roost in 
a nest box to get out of the elements, to get out of the wind. So if, if you bring in your, if you have birdhouses and you bring them in in the winter, uh, give some thought to uh, leaving them out through the cold months because some birds will actually use those as shelter. My family had a tradition of putting out suet for birds. Um, it was a Norwegian tradition. Um, is that something that's helpful to them in the winter? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we have a suet feeder uh, out back with our bird feeders. So, um, and, and you can buy all kinds of different flavors and styles. If you go to Menards or, well, especially Menards, they have a huge variety of yeah. suet cakes. Um, and those will attract, those will attract, um, uh, especially the woodpeckers, the, the, the downies, the hairy woodpeckers, the, uh, the red-bellied woodpeckers. And uh, they will also attract the house sparrows. And to keep the house sparrows from eating all of that up and, and not letting the woodpeckers get to it, we actually have one that instead of hanging it sideways so the birds can cling on the side and eat the suet, we have one that hangs upside down with a little roof over it. And only the woodpeckers can use that because they can swoop in under and they have the, the strength in their legs to hold on and, and eat the suet, but the sparrows not so much. That's neat. Is there any different um, kind of feed? I think suet's a high fat kind of thing for the winter, um, but are there other kinds of feeding changes that they need over the winter? Um, more fats are better. So uh, we actually feed a number of different seeds in seed mixes at our house. But if you kind of stick with just one and just one feeder, then you might go from say a um, just a regular mix of seed that has a variety of um, of different seeds in it. You might go to something that has a higher fat content, like um, uh, a mix that includes more safflower and more sunflower, uh, the black oil sunflower seeds. Yeah. And it's it's to boost that that fat content because that's the calories they need the calories to to burn to keep them warm. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome um, because then you don't have to go out in the cold. You can just look out your window <laughs> and right. see the birds. Right. But the Audubon Society sponsors a bird count in December, right? So people right. are going out and specifically looking for birds. Can you tell us more about that? Sure, sure. And actually, this is a this is a um, an international uh, event that takes place, and. Um, all of the data from even this tiny little spot in Will County that the Will County Audubon chapter surveys, that information goes to a, uh, our compiler who gives it to a state compiler and that information is, is shared with scientists and, and ornithologists throughout the country. So um, in a nutshell, what happens is, um, uh, and it doesn't have to be on a specific day, but the official the official day for this year is is December nineteenth, and um, uh, our compiler coordinates. Okay, what team is going to go to what area, and um, our area that we cover, uh, the Will County Audubon chapter covers is a uh, is a uh, circle that is centered on the intersection of Interstate fifty five and Interstate eighty. That's the epicenter and then a, from a, a seven mile radius out from that. And so our compiler uh, 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 coordinates the various teams and figures out where the various teams are going to go. My team always covers um, Van Horn Woods in uh, uh, near Plainfield. We go to Lake Renwick Heron Rookery and uh, several other parks and spots and we we uh, drive along the DuPage, the DuPage River in the Plainfield area and we count waterfowl. There's, there's always a lot of ducks that are, that right. are wintering right. along that uh, running water on the DuPage. Those are some of the places that my specific team goes. And then so there are other, other teams in Will County Audubon that go to, to other places. So if we went out behind the Black Road Library on December 19th in that forest preserve that's back there, that's the, it's a marshland as well, um, mm -hmm. we would probably see some teams out there doing the bird watching, right? 
the bird count? Uh, the, there is a team, I don't remember who it is, but there is a team that, that goes to that particular forest preserve, yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Greg. I really appreciate you talking with me. I will make sure and share it with all of the bird lovers in Joliet. And um, we will be checking to see what we can do to help the birds in the winter in Joliet. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. Bye.